We have 60 odd sites across the countryside. They are in remote areas. E.g. Mount Isa, Wyala, Broome, Port Macquarie, for example. The business problem that PFD have been trying to resolve is the fact that we need to get the information through to our staff in regards to how the HACCP Food Safety Program works. What we needed was a tool to help get that message across in a better format and a better way. Had a lot of consultation between ourselves and Equals. Um, they really looked at what we required for this program to be simple, targeted and effective. The resource is very user friendly. You can easily find following the flow diagram um, each step that's required. It follows on, it shows details of what the do's in regards to how you should handle that product and what you should do with that product and also indicates and shows you in great photographic evidence of what you shouldn't do with any product that's received in the warehouse. With our clients, Equals have developed um, two tools within this process. One, of course, is for PFD, food services, as we are a wholesaler, but also there has been a version developed for food handling for our customers. This will help the clients of ours meet the requirements of their local food safety authorities. The framework funding has enabled us to work with Equals to develop a very good learning tool, which we didn't believe at the beginning we could do, but this has proven that we can and we will be able to use it for other areas of training. Um, in our e-learning project, um, the organisations that were involved was CBS South and Global Mid ICT. Um, the problem that um, CBS uh, had, I guess, where e-learning could solve or certainly go some way to assisting them was in relation to improving the level of awareness of service delivery and the components and the aspects of service delivery. The solution that uh, GlobalNet has provided to CBS South uh, is a Moodle learning management system with customised and contextualised e-learning resources. As we got more and more information about how they operated on a daily basis, we changed the way that um, some of the training was happening. We changed the activities to try and fit in with um, the CBS staff and how they may use the training in the future. The best thing for CBS in terms of uh, the e-learning is that some staff in particular have taken it on with great enthusiasm, which has meant that they've been able to do um, study that they wouldn't have done otherwise. And for CBS, it's part of the suite of opportunities that people can take advantage of to increase their skills and knowledge. Um, what we've used is uh, an SMS plugin um, from a UK software company. Um, the reason we chose this SMS plugin is because it plugs into Moodle itself. Uh, the business outcomes for using SMS project, SMS software within this project is that because it was embedded within the e-learning, now it can be used to extend CBS South's normal business context into things such as reminding people about board meetings or alerting them to uh, payroll. E-learning has been a challenge, interesting, you've got to put in, but you also learn a lot about your business. I've got three quarters of the way through and I'm doing far better than I thought, so anyone can do it. The project that we did for our e-learning innovations was a project with three of our industry partners. The industry partners were TT Line, which they call themselves the Spirit of Tasmania for the purpose of this project, Henry Jones Art Hotel and the Country Club Casino. And we were looking at Certificate 4 hospitality units. The whole idea is to try and create something that's going to be really customised and are very relevant to that particular business. The original resource that we used was the hospitality management tool toolbox. I had to do a unit called Monitor Work Operations, which is a core unit for Certificate 4, and that particular unit is all about the day-to-day -day work operations and, in particular, how they relate to the spirit of Tasmania and what happens on board the ship. 
What we've tried to do with Drysdale is develop a, an, an in-house course uh, that's specific to our, our business, uh, which is quite a unique business within Tasmania. Um, working on board vessels as opposed to a land-based hotel, there are quite a few restrictions and other requirements that uh, need to be addressed for our staff. A lot of the training happens when they're at sea, and with e-learning, e-learning actually is online, but they're not online when they're at sea. Basically, um, we've had um, masses of consultation with Drysdale, and they've actually come on board and, and looked at our facilities, uh, checked out our different systems and procedures. The program customises resources, um, in this case to Country Club Tasmania, by, uh, do, by using in-house documents from Country Club, and because it's basically uh, a work-based assessment, it, it works on the um, practical things that are already happening here and there's also a big emphasis on recognition so that students who are already doing these things don't have to do them again. What I'm excited about with the project is that the e-learning resources are, are taking advantage of technology to enable a consistent message to be f available 24-7 to all of our potential and existing supervisors. I was partnered with the Henry Jones Art Hotel and in particular with Matt Casey, the general manager. I suppose us as a hotel at Henry Jones has, has really customised what we want, what we want out of the project. If we, if we look at a, a subject like uh, interpreting financial information, uh, we've, we've used our materials there and the KPIs and the charts that we refer to, uh, so it's relevant to the staff when they're, going, when they're going through their certification. The partnership has been great. Essentially, um, it's given me greater insight into what a business, a specific business, needs. We want to be able to have a really good training provider on board and we want the training to be relevant. Um, and in doing that, we believe that we can focus uh, our recruitment on employing staff that have great skills, that have great ethics, great, great morals. Um, but really are, are quite personable people and we can add the skills at a later stage. Uh, the business problem that Banjos have specifically is that uh, we're a franchise and we need consistency. We also have a problem in providing training to a number of our staff who work in different hours. Being able to replicate that training um, is an essential part of being a franchise. The solution to our training problem has been to bring all of this into an online learning platform. There's text providing instructions, there's videos that they can watch, photos step by step. And so they'll do a number of things like drag and drops, um, multiple choice. We'll send out promotional material and gut feel we know that the stores that achieve the best promotions are the stores that have actually trained their staff. Now with our e-learning project we'll definitely have the tool. We can measure it from region, we can measure it from the field consultants who are responsible for the regions, we can measure it right down to a store level and now right down to an individual level. The obvious benefit for that is that we will be able to feed back that information to franchisees to show that the training does translate into pure hard dollars. Initial funding provided the impetus for the board to release extra funds to us and that would then pr um, contributed to an ongoing commitment to providing the resources that needed to fund that project and that, that certainly wouldn't have been considered had we not even had that initial investment and now what it's shown is the outcomes that we're going to achieve um, even right down to things like retention of our existing staff by having these types of projects on your books and being able to roll them out means you're at the forefront of best practice. The engagement of, a, of an outsource provider was probably the most critical aspect for us in getting something ready to market in the shortest period of time. Superior Services worked with probably eight to ten of the leading franchise brands and all of that learning gets bundled into um, one entire platform. The impact of this project is purely going to be the um, the reduction in the amount of labour that we have to expend to actually deliver training to our franchisees and staff across the group. The most amazing thing about this whole project is the ability now for 
any employee, any time, in any banjo store to log on and actually start contributing to their career progression. We are hoping that this form of uh, delivering information to the staff members actually breaks down the barriers completely and they have direct access to any information that we may want to disseminate across the group and they can actually use that same portal to actually deliver information back to us. The refrigeration industry is, is generally located in the northwest of the state, is our major focus on in, in the industry industrially. The industry in the northwest wanted uh, a more flexible training program. It's been very hard for us in certainly the refrigeration air conditioning discipline to find teachers because of the fact that it's a skill shortage area. And, uh, and I can give an example that earlier this year um, I advertised um, almost nationally for a refrigeration air conditioning teacher and I had no takers, no replies to that. This is the first year that we've worked with Tony and offered students at Elizabeth College Electrotechnology. It's given the students the opportunity to access learning when they want to access it. It means they don't actually have to attend the workshop and come out to Claremont every time that they have a class. But I think for, for 21st century learners it's really important that they can do the learning when they want to do the learning. Uh, the project was organised in several stages. We had our first uh, evaluation and trial. When we first did the trial run as the first off guinea pigs, uh, it was, it, could, it was sometimes a little bit difficult navigating our way through. Then the second evaluation and trial towards the end of the program and the feedback that we got from our final um, evaluation certainly backed up the changes that we've done from our initial uh, research and our initial trial period. Made you, made you feel more independent as well, that you could do it all by yourself and not have people telling you what to do and you can actually work it out. I've worked with our admin assistant, which is Abby, in regards to the project. It's been important to upskill Abby because she has now got the skills to be able to um, provide that relief as far as helping teachers out. But I've certainly got huge plans in the future for Certificate 4, uh, which is post-trade. The majority of our students, they, they work with their hands, they're paid to work with their hands, they love working with their hands, so do I. But a requirement of the training package is there's a knowledge component they need to know and, and the way of assessing that knowledge is usually via the pen, they write something down, they do some kind of testing or something, so that we can have a concrete, concrete example of how they're learning. What we were trying to do is create another kind of learning style online to suit those students so those students can find a way to get through their training better suited to their, their style. There's a certain amount of text that we have to put in there, it's just that that's the way it is. But we've tried to continuously keep the text to a small chunks and then put videos in there. And explains through video, through visual, through clicking on things that expand out later on, through through where we've used a magnifying glass to have a close look at what's going on. As a project manager for this, it, I made a decision very early on that, that I cannot develop the resources for doing this. I cannot be the computer expert. Within TAFE, we have all those experts, and Deidre Brown is the one that did it for us in that respect. The, the partners for this project were, we have, we have footage and voiceovers and talking to people from an artisan-style bakeries. We have banjos um, allowed us to go in and film the process that they use. And, and all around the hospital, they were great with that. Crips has allowed us at many times to go out and film. We already are the leader in the, in, in the book-based learning. We've, we've, we've been selling that 20 odd, 25 odd RTOs around Australia. This is just a natural evolution. We, we've been refining those books now for eight years and, and we're very happy with it and we won't stop refining, but, but this is a, a natural evolution of that process. This week I was at Australian Society Baking as a keynote speaker and I presented it to all the, the people there and, and a lot of feedback, a lot of, lot of how we could go about doing it, where the future lays and all that sort of stuff. So, so it was, the impact is that we plan to continue that process out and have the full training package available. E-learning to me is, is if you can dream it, you can make it. Twofold, really. First uh, thing was the safety side. We were finding and hearing about quite a few accidents in industry with the use of uh, basically angle grinders, um, 
milling cutters and you know, the attachments with all the grinders. So, and not only with new apprentices, but also with people that are more experienced becoming a bit complacent. Initially, the training for this uh, unit of competence, which is the use of power tools, is basically been with a, a learning resource, which is all paper-based. Uh, we found it very hard to get some uh, good video to help uh, show the students basically the use of power tools. So being paper-based, if a student had a literacy problem, they were this was fairly lengthy for them and, uh, to work through, and they found it a little bit boring. The resource is, is more visual because it's actually uh, gives you some video footage of actual live content of people actually doing the job. Uh, mainly one industry partner, and that was uh, Canon Grand Mining. Uh, we have taken some footage at INCAT because they also use the power tools and have quite a, quite a large instance of um, accidents down there as well. We're a uh, teaching a trade based area, so all the, all the work that the students do is all, it's all hands on. Uh, so they're all practical, they, they work with their hands all day. Uh, so when we come to uh, the training here, we want them to also be engaged. They can actually uh, take it on the job as well, take this resource on the job. Uh, lets them work at their own pace. It also lets them the, uh, be able to take it home and work on it in their own time. We can put a bit of uh, graphic images in there, especially on the safety side, because I think a lot of the young students that come through haven't seen any serious accidents. So to have a little bit of that visual in there and they say, well, look, if you don't use it properly, this is what can happen. The funding has enabled us to actually start with e-learning in our, our uh, department at the moment, because before that we, we were only totally paper-based resource. So this has given us a start on e-learning. E-learning in the context of where we've came from really suits the plumbing industry because plumbers are time poor and it allows them to concentrate on their learning experience out of hours. It just makes for better use of their time. Well the objective very clearly from the beginning of this portal is to combine the uh, e-business and the e-learning. The estimate and cost work course um, is probably the one that they would come to first of all. Once they come in there, then they have very clear instructions as to which path to follow. Uh, but if they choose to, if you like, jump around a little bit and play around, then they can also do that as well. But we'd like them to step through, step by step. It became obvious to us that we need to be able to develop our business side of it, we need to control it. The best way to go about that was was to have a, um, I guess, a management system that would allow us to do the day-to-day, -day. but of course we didn't have the expertise or the wherewithal to do the e-learn. With the journey that um, Adrian and the Master Plumbers Association have had, it's been quite a, an exciting one. That meant for me to uh, go back to school, I guess, and then embrace that. LearnScope was the catalyst to get a heads up on what we could do. We become familiar with uh, the fact that there was already quite a bit of uh, e-learning material out there and various toolboxes. Frankie come on board and we uh, have an arrangement where Frankie, as a consultant, guides us on the principles involved in the e-learn and helps us on all the, all the issues that come uh, up from time to time. We've actually walked hand in hand more than anything else. The funding has uh, allowed us to develop a very unique package of training within the plumbing industry. It's a new innovation, uh, it's exciting. I think it offers a lot for the plumbing industry, particularly those that are a bit remote. The project was seeking to solve two problems. Firstly, that the resources that were being used within the housekeeping training weren't appropriately matched to the learning styles of the participants. Secondly, that there was needed to be additional resources for the people participating in the training whilst they were on work placement within the industry. The solution to the problem has been the creation of visual resources. We have photographs that represent an aspect of a task that a housekeeper is required to do on the job. The photograph itself is actually tagged with something that allows a, um, a reader to sort of fire off uh, video that represents the task in full. It's much like a barcode scanner in a supermarket. All you have to do is pick up a card and swipe it over a box and you've got your technology in action. Well, the exciting thing for me about the project, I think, is looking at alternative learning resources for some of our students who perhaps are disadvantaged. It's almost a de facto mentor because you've got 
one specific person in the whole video telling you what needs to be done. So you've got this point of reference that's familiar, it's constant, and it's always there. The relationship between uh, TAFE and the wool store has been one of high expectations from both parties. They've worked with us to develop the program. The wool store has been able to converge all their, the skills that they need to teach onto one disc. So this resource allows us to reiterate, even to staff who've been there for a long time, this is the way we would like it done. The level of churn, as it's called, has dropped down there considerably, seeing that there is a more consistent one. I think it works well on any uh, learning level, on any, any person, uh, whether they have learning difficulties or English is a second language, or they haven't been to school for 20 years. It cuts through all that and allows people to actually uh, build a set of skills with confidence. I think that's what it comes down to as a teacher. I like to see my students confident. Morning, Lifeline. How may we help you? Lifeline Hobart has 120 telephone counsellors, um, and we wanted to make sure that we had opportunities for volunteers to increase their skills. I heard about the Certificate Four when I was doing my training at Lifeline. Once I applied for the for the production of the cert of, to participate on the on the Certificate Four, I realised there was too much. In paperwork, paper-based paper information, and too complex. So it's very difficult in the old process to find the material and gather the material. We thought that it uh, would, be, would, be, would have been great if we had uh, an electronic version of, uh, of the resources and of the, of the structure of the Certificate 4. So we've been using Moodle um, as a platform to collect the data so that we can actually give accreditation to the four units of competency. But this ePortfolio section has seven, uh, seven assessment tasks or data collection points in there, um, which will collect everything from uh, information on particular types of cause to managing emergency programs to doing self-care practices and oh &S practices. The privacy issues has obviously been a major issue for us. We, um, the way we've got around that is that we actually have a code for all callers. So when a telephone counsellor takes a call, they get a log code for that and we actually using that as a piece of evidence. Yes, I was involved in the focus group which was very, very interesting because it brought to life, um, looking through what we needed for the checklist of evidence of sources, it brought that to life and it began to show us that where the material could be sourced from and it began to put a map, a very easy to use map of what belonged to what and where each piece fitted in the pattern as you went through what was required. In each. It's wonderful to have the opportunity to be part of the developmental process as well as um, the end result. In many ways I think there's been a bit of a cultural look at this process that has led us to think a little bit more smart about the way we do things. At a national level I can see this has been a quite a, a simple way that four units of competency can be covered by volunteers right across Australia um, in a minimal time. The business problem DHHS has is we're a large organisation, we've got almost 12,000 people, we have great challenges in getting learning and organisational development out to staff, particularly in the area of mandatory training. Our solution we chose this year was to not pick one topic for e-learning, but was to instead pick many topics and embed the capacity for e-learning into the future across the department. And we did that by upskilling 35 people Well, the partnership with TAFE Tasmania has been everything to us. We couldn't have done our project without it. Uh, TAFE Tasmania's role has been to work with the DHHS uh, participants in building their capability. We knew that for it to be sustainable, we had to look at free and open source tools. Some of the free and open source tools that we've used have been EXI, which is an e-learning editor. We've used Windows Movie Maker, that was already available to department staff. We've used Audacity for audio editing. We've used Arid for building interactive activities. Uh, we've been working on an e-learning project uh, for manual handling. But this e-learning module enables us to reach well, a wider audience that we never had before. Um, 
Typically, all staff in a hospital setting have to receive annual manual handling training, and that's just not feasible when you're talking about thousands of, of employees. And we try and show how an injury actually impacts not only the person who's hurt, but their family, you know, everyone, work uh, their work colleagues, their dog, <laughs> their husband, team. softball team, etc. And we've tried to make it relevant for people. I'm looking forward to all the modules that we offer currently, at least at the um, Launceston in general, bringing them into line with what's offered at the Royal. So we're actually getting continuity across the acute care sector. We've been focusing on coexisting disorders, um, as in substance use disorder and mental um, health disorders. We're excited about the fact that we can now reach more people seeing we're such a small unit and that we have at least 700 in the workforce out there that we need to get education out to and this way it, it's far more resourceful and it's more cost effective. The other thing it can do is to give background information to people before they actually go to some face-to-face -face learning. So you can actually, instead of having two-day learning program that's face-to-face, you can maybe make it one day or half a day, which means the clinicians can actually get away to go to it. What we're doing <laughs> In our project, we've put together some tools and techniques to help people in their workplaces to improve what they do in their processes. We've got a toolkit of different charts, process maps, different techniques that they can use to help improve. We've built relationships with a lot of people from throughout the department who we wouldn't otherwise get the opportunity to work with face to face. The next step for us is to keep going out there, selling the market, championing the project, telling people about what we've done and how fantastic e-learning is. The year learning project we did last year on fire and emergency awareness was released on our internal intranet in April, early April, and it's now early November, and we've had 2,500 staff go through that online and complete that online. So we couldn't have possibly achieved that with face-to-face -face sessions.